Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 250. I'm Rob Menching here, joined with uh, my fellow Wix maintainers, Bob Arnson and Sean Hall. Uh, this meeting is recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now, and uh, we have a lot of stuff to talk about, so let's go get into the agenda. If you're here, we have some new faces. It's great. Go ahead and say hi. Uh, if you've already said hello, then welcome. Uh, what are we doing today? We are doing the Wix 4 release plan review because, well, we are releasing Wix 4. This is what we've been doing for the last, uh, I don't know four months, six months, whatever it is. Uh, that's what we're doing. We're gonna release Wix 4, so we're gonna talk about that. Uh, because that's going well, uh, spoiler alert, uh, I wanna talk about uh, changes that we're gonna do to the Wix processes in 2023, how things will work uh, a little different and as in Wix going forward. Then we'll do our usual issue review and triage where we'll talk about all the new bugs and we'll talk about the bugs that are still open, which essentially is a continuation of the review. And then we'll do questions and comments. Uh, and there's a reason I put the process changes in between the review and the review. So let's go ahead and talk about Wix 4 release plan review. Uh, there's nothing surprising, hopefully, on here, except maybe the third bullet. But tomorrow, as all of you know, is RC2 release day. We do have a couple important fixes in there. I know a lot of people are excited for those. Uh, MS Build project references probably being the biggest thing that's in there. Uh, that's in there tomorrow. Get RC2, tell all of your people that you know that use Wix to get up on uh, Wix 4, trying it out, and RC2 will be a great time for everybody to get on board. Uh, I put the line in the sand of RC3 on February 24th. The date that I've been kind of bouncing around was 17th or 24th, because February 10th would be too early to do RC3 on a typical monthly cadence. And then it turns out that I'm out of town the 17th, uh, and neither Bob nor Sean said they want to do all the release process. So uh, the 24th, it is uh, February 24th. And uh, so that'll be RC3. What's going to be in RC3? Hopefully nothing more than a couple bug fixes, because we're just doing RCs until we kind of get to the point where we're like, yeah, you know what? I think we've seen enough of the bugs. We're done. And we will move on to Wix 5. So that's what we're doing. Tomorrow, RC2, you all knew that. Uh, RC3 will be February 24th. And then there will, as we get closer to that, we will talk about if there's an RC4, what that means, and so on and so forth. At any point, we could say, you know what? That last RC, that's the one. We're done with doing that. Something like that. Okay. Wix 4 is doing great. The RCs have been doing great. We've been able to get through. Each month has been a nice roundup of bugs, and we've been able to clean a lot of them, uh, almost all of them out each time and kind of get ourselves to a nice clean slate into the next release. So I've, I'm really happy with Wix 4, which has given a little time to breathe and look forward. I don't know if you guys saw my Wix 4 summit on .NET Foundation this last week. That was kind of a wrap up of getting more people excited about Wix 4. Uh, I've done a lot of streams this week. Uh, I've been online, at least this one, I'm not, don't have the camera on, but I've had enough time to think about what are we going to be doing going forward? How do things uh, look as we march into, uh, honestly, Wix 5? That's what we're gonna be talking about. We're uh, going to Wix 5. So what are the process changes we're gonna do at a high level? Uh, the main lists are gonna go away. We're just gonna shut them down. I'll talk about each of these in more detail. We are gonna pick up a new release cadence and we are gonna try and I think we will succeed at simplifying triage. We've talked about these things amongst ourselves to try to get things that we want in there. And uh, I'll go into more detail on each of those. First, the mailing list shutting down. Uh, mailing list traffic has declined precipitously and GitHub discussions traffic has uh, been picking up even though it's been marked as an experiment, which is kind of the way I figured things would go at some point if GitHub discussions was to be successful. So we're gonna clear the experimental, actually I've already cleared off the experimental bit on GitHub discussions, and that's where we're gonna start putting more of our traffic. Uh, that means in 2023, the Wix communication channels are uh, for announcements, general, hey, here's all these things that are going on. You'll get the Wix news, which is the Wix blog on wixtoolset.org. You can continue to go to Fire Giant blog where all of these meetings are summarized, updates about heat waiver uh, put, and also summaries of Wix releases in general that uh, we categorize and or, um, curate, 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 I don't know basically put more words behind things to have a nice story. You'll get those on Fire Giant blog. And then of course, announcements will put on GitHub discussions. Uh, these meeting announcements, for example, will be on GitHub discussions. I've been duplicating them to the mailing list. Obviously that will stop. Q&A, 
Q&A will be on GitHub discussions. That's already been there. You've been able to do that. Stack Overflow will continue to be a place. And for those people that are customers of FireGiant, they can go to FireGiant support and get their uh, questions answered. So that's kind of where we're going to centralize uh, in the spaces, honestly, the places that are popular for people. The final shutdown of the mailing list will be later this year, uh, probably sometime this summer. And we are looking into uh, in archive options, what are the best way, things like that. We don't want to lose all the data, just have it disappear, but we're going to stop having people send mail. And I will send a mail to the mailing list probably after this meeting or Monday or something after RC2 is out to basically tell people, hey, um, we're going to be shutting these down. So go think about asking your questions on GitHub discussions. We'll update the doc site to say, hey, GitHub discussions. So essentially point people at GitHub discussions. So. This is a change coming basically as soon as there's a chance to finish all of the points, but don't send mail to mailing lists, start sending your things to just GitHub discussions like most of you already have. All right, I don't think that's terribly exciting or interesting. Most people are like, yeah, okay, fine, whatever. Things that are more interesting. Uh, we wanna to move to a yearly release. The world has kind of settled on yearly releases, although the Windows guys probably are going too fast. Uh, but we think that year releases will do well for Wix as well. So our goal is a yearly Wix release. So next major release, that'd be like Wix 5, Wix 6, Wix 7. Non-goals are pretty much any other release. It is not a goal to do dot releases of any sort or kind in general. Patch releases where we do like a 4.0.1 can be done at maintainer's discretion. So if Sean or Bob or I come up and say, ah, we really need to fix this, we can do a dot release. But yeah, that's about it. We're not gonna be doing releases. We're gonna be focused on the next major release, hopefully in the next year. So I have this rough schedule kind of thrown up here, which is kind of logical based off of the end game of Wix 4. We will get a feel for how well we can stick to this um, the time, you know, like, hey, about nine months is for the thing that we would call preview one. And that would be where feature complete is done. So it's like, hey, we finished this. We think all the work is done. Uh, all the features are in. And then a uh, month after that, we'll do RC1, RC2, and then hopefully RTM. The number of RCs is a thing we're gonna learn. How long the preview is, the preview one is, basically how long feature complete is, is something that we'll adjust based off of how many features we put into a release. Uh, but you're going to see a lot fewer release features go into a release. Mm, easy for me to say. Uh, Bob, Sean, and I will talk about it and be like, yeah, here's the things that we think we can get done in the next year. Uh, so that's what we'll put it in. And that should fit in something that doesn't go longer than seven to nine months with this many RCs after things like that. So our first one, Wix 5, we're gonna try to hit something that looks something like this schedule. We'll get more details when we do, drill into what exactly is in Wix 5, uh, and then we'll get better from there. You know, the first one, maybe we won't quite hit 12 months. We'll get a little earlier or a little bit uh, longer, uh, almost always certainly longer, but you know, we'll, we'll learn and get better. But this is gonna be our new goal. Uh, the, nobody wants to redo what we did in Wix 4, and even Wix 3 was, uh, don't like the way Wix 3 was being worked, and the overlap between Wix 2 to Wix 3, for anybody that was wrong that time, haven't liked any of those releases. So we're gonna try to go to this, where we're essentially focused on one major release each year. And if there are any patch releases, it's because one of us thought it was important enough to do it. Uh, but that's about it. So that might be a big thing. That's probably uh, something that people like, I, Christopher's actually already put it in the things like, hey, it'd be nice to look at a maybe a, a faster release cadence. Yes, we're looking at yearly. All right. Huh. With that known, knowing that we're going to be moving that direction, this is a, and, and that's not for four, clearly. Four is in the release process now, and we are doing as many RCs as we need to because Waste 4 was a very long release. We had more things changed. Um, and it's, is there any chance extensions could release on their own if needed? No, we're not doing dot releases of extensions. We're not planning to do dot releases. We're not looking at anything that distracts us from core Wix. Now, I, I have thrown out the idea a few times and it's never really stuck of kicking extensions out of the core tool set and just letting them run by themselves. Uh, we'd have to get very stable on the interfaces for that to work out well. I tried that in the beginning of Wix 4. It had a lot of uh, cross repo challenges and generally was not um, enjoyed by most people, but it's something we can review, but no, we're not planning to go and do additional extension releases on their own until we get to the day where we're like, hey, this extension, be free. Someone is maintaining it and gonna run it on a schedule maybe faster than Wix. 
we can do that. We could talk about that. But at this point in time, nobody's doing any of that kind of work. So no, we're all lined up to the major releases are going. All right. So what does that mean for, actually, I'll pause here a second. If anybody else wants to ask other things about your releases, I, it really is getting behind a yearly release, major release numbers, not a lot of destructions on the other things. Um, yeah, I, we'll have to look at that. We'll see, Chris, Ray. like it just takes time to go back and do those releases and we'll have to decide. Maybe we'll decide, yeah, you know, it's worth us for it to go back and do a dot release and do that, but yeah. All right, so hold, hold, hold. I haven't seen anything else. Yeah, and Painter, I mean, that Chris, that's a good point that, you know, maybe we will have, you know, if fire giant commissioners are coming along and saying, hey, we need this continually maintained, we will be doing those maintained patch releases for them, right? Because they're, they're paying for our time to go make that a priority. That could happen. Okay. Year releases, that's a thing that we're going to go. This is a goal. We're going to learn a lot in this next release. We think this is a better way going forward. Uh, maybe. I, I'm not making any guarantees for anything in the community username. Uh, like it, Any patch release could be super stable. Yeah, should be. You can look at the changes that are in it. Uh, the We're not making guarantees about the stability here in the core tool set, right? So you want guarantees? you can go other places for guarantees. All right, triage process review. We're introducing up for grabs. We've had lots of talk about all these different systems that we could, and we kind of halfway start with the, the concept of meh, if uh, Jacob is around, that's pretty old, uh, to the suspend, to the respawn concept. And after kind of going around, 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 uh, I've come to a, a much simpler system that's based on pretty much what everybody else is doing. So why don't we do the same thing? And that's on up for grabs. So we're gonna to continue to do triage like we do here. But when we get done with an issue, if none of us here or in chat pops up and says, hey, I wanna work on that issue, then we're gonna be like, yeah, nobody wants to work on an issue. We're gonna mark it up for grabs and it will sit out there for someone to pick up if they wanna pick it up. That means that these milestones that we've been carrying along forever that are just dumping grounds of hundreds of issues like Wix v3.x and Wix v4.x that say, well, we could fix it in here, but you know, we're not going to. We're just gonna label all of them up for grabs and we're gonna delete those milestones. So essentially there's gonna be, I don't know, I think 700, 800 up for grabs issues, just kind of things that have been out there for a long time that if someone wants to grab it, they can. So if you want to grab one of those things that get marks up for grabs, how do you do that? You just leave a comment and say, hey, I'd like to fix this issue. We'll re-triage it, figure out the correct release for it to jump into and assign it to that person that said they want to work on it. Um, of course, a maintainer, you know, like we're those same kind of things. So maybe as a maintainer, we go back and go, oh, you know, I have some free time. I want to go back to upper grabs and grab this issue that I've wanted for a long time, bring it forward. We'll talk about what release to get it in and go that. Otherwise, if you have an issue that's really important for you, there is now the option. I've not talked about this enough, I don't think, but there is the option. You can fund Wix development through Fire Giant support. That's what Christopher Painter was hinting at, saying he wish he had money to throw out this problem. If there are things you want guarantees, like username wants guarantees about this or that, you can fund that development here and uh, keep things rolling. That's definitely one of the ways of doing it. So this is a simplification of our process where if we get to the end and none of us steps up, including chat, and says, hey, I want that issue, uh, we're gonna label it up for grabs and it's gonna hang out there. I have a whole flow chart that I'm trying to put together that I don't have um, worked out completely yet. Sean has poked enough holes or bugs in my, or pointed out enough bugs in my flow chart that I need to kind of get a little bit, but it essentially walks through at a high level, this same process of, you know, as we triage things, we'll go through them and where they go and what happens when something's marked for up grabs and uh, who it's assigned to and all that kind of stuff. Just the minute details of it. Uh, and I hope to publish that uh, in our dev section and our dev uh, documentation. Um, in the not too distant future. I have to make sure I get all the bits and pieces right. So we're gonna try using up for grabs today in triage for any issue that uh, nobody here is gonna fix. And we're gonna go for that um, uh, today. That's what we're gonna do. So pause there for a second. I think this is pretty self-explanatory because this is basically the way most other projects, many, many, many other projects work. And there's actually a website you can go to, the, 
search for, hey, show me all the issues for up for grabs across all these projects. So it's it's a definitely a thing out there. It's pretty simple. Hopefully it actually makes it clearer to what issues are being fixed and which ones are not. I, it's just to just streamline a whole lot of work instead of us going, well, we could do this. No, nope. nope, it's up for grabs. And if you want it, go ask for it and we will assign it to you unless we think it should be gone. But then at that point, it shouldn't be up for grabs. We should have got rid of it before that. So yeah, it, it also simplifies things because we've had issues in the past where we, while, while we're doing triage, we need to decide is this three X four O or four X Yeah, or V next or V next had, had all of those in, in play. And you know, the, some of it is just, Oh, well that's a, breaking change so it would have to be in a dot zero which dot zero well uh, uh, wine 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 yep. it, you know it's like this is interesting i might want to do it but i don't want to commit so you know it goes into v next it's like uh far future bucket future bob will worry about that uh this way it's like yeah it's up, it's up for grabs it can happen yep. in the next release whatever 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 that, that next is. release is or as per another previous one. slide yep, yep. Yeah, these fit together well. That's why I did them in this order, because I think when we were discussing, I made a present. No, I think I present this order, but this is better. All right, so uh, there we go. That's the big process changes for 2023. Mailing lists are no more. No big surprise. Our goal in Wix 5, which will be the first major release, is yearly, re yearly releases. That is what we're going to try working towards. And we are introducing up for grabs in our triage process to simplify the process and hopefully make, honestly, triage go smoother. It's like, if we're not taking it, it goes there. So let's go practice. Let's go do exactly that. And uh, let's review our stuff and do triage. We'll do triage first, and then we'll do review. I really should switch the words, order on these words, but it's the same difference. Bob, you ready? Uh, okay, yeah. It's new and scary, but that's okay. It's not new and scary. Fortunately, I already created the upper grabs label for you. So uh, I noticed. I checked. Apply it. You checked. <laughs> All right. Starting at the top uh, V3 to V4 conversion of a merge module isn't as pretty as package. Uh, Ron took a look at this and found that it's going to take a bunch of work, uh, more work than he uh, uh, chose to do, which is fine. Uh, and then Chris closed it saying, ah, it's not that important. And then Sean left some comments saying, well, it would be kind of like clean up like this or these things and so on and so forth. That's kind of the summary as I remember of this issue. Um, I bring it up because it was it was in RC2. It's not gonna make RC2. So uh, should this issue be opened? Is it really closed because nobody's gonna work on it? Uh, what's the, Sean, what were you uh, suggesting here? Were you just pointing directions or did you have an idea? Well, it was closed in a milestone, but it's not fixed. So yeah, I know. either someone needs to take it or we need to take it out of the milestone. Right. Okay, so I we can reopen this then and then just kick it out for up for grabs and move on. Okay. Right? Yeah. All right, cool. Cool. And it looks like Chris said the exact same thing. So that's great. So um, I'm going to sit here and watch GitHub change a little bit while Bob makes those changes and see how this turns out. Well, that's pretty presumptuous. Well, I, you started. So I was like, oh, I actually want to see it happen. This is kind of cool. I know. It's done. Now you, oh, there it is. And we got to kick it out of the milestone. Is the milestone not refresh as fast? Um, yeah, that must be it. It's not like <laughs> I forgot to set the milestone. <laughs> there we go. All right. So one minor thing is as part of the uh, flow chart. Oh, yes. And that's a good point too, Chris. We should pull Ron as the assignee. Because as is in the flow chart that I'm refining, the goal is that up for grabs ends up with none of these things assigned. It's not assigned to anybody. It's not in a milestone. It's just kind of hanging out there until someone wants to pick it up and then we will assign all those things when someone says they want to fix it. So, great, that is that issue. All right, uh, Wix 4 compression does not create files as small as V3. Uh, is Merch happen to be here? I didn't, nobody had that name in the chat and GitHub names and YouTube names don't always line up. Sometimes they do. Um, I, I'm gonna say we should like punt this issue at this point because uh, they've not come back with more information. If they do, we'll take a look at it, but at this point, there's nothing in here that says that something is seriously wrong with V4. It just says that sometimes it's not as, some things are bigger, but he's not giving us, he's giving percentages instead of real numbers. So it's like, well, 10% of what? Three megs or three gigs? 
Yeah, and this is one where you know anything embedded like custom action binaries yep. um, is going to be you know, different. Yep. Generally about the same size. I noticed you know we're using the latest Visual C++, so they might be a little tiny bit smaller, but yep. nothing yep. significant. So, all right. I think we can close this as not a bug and move on. All right. Uh, minor upgrade removes all files and uninstall services. Uh, Sean and Bob are all about this one. So I'm going to take a step back and let you guys discuss even what's going on here. So I created a pull request to fix the issue. Um, I, I wrote up a big thing about what happened where V4 changed the default uh, provider key that it creates. So if you don't author your own provider key in the MSI package, then Wix will create one for you to track the dependence. And it changed in V4 so that the base package and the minor update package don't share the same provider key anymore. So what was happening was the bundle was a major upgrade of the previous bundle but the MSI package was only a minor upgrade. So because the dependents were different, what happened was the newer bundle installed the minor update and then it uninstalled the older bundle and the older bundle uninstalled the base package. So it ended up with pretty much nothing on the machine. So that was the scenario. And then the fix was to change burn to not uninstall superseded packages, MSI packages. And my comment on the pull request was, yeah, that seems like the right thing to do in a general case, because that works for both minor and major upgrades. So, so. I was just making sure we all agree that this is the right thing to do before I committed it. The only other option, the only other option, another option is to change the provider key back, the dependency key, provider key back to the old way the V3 did it. True. I, I think that created problems. Right. That, that, I, I don't remember the details of it, but I think we changed that on purpose. So this I changed like... that as part of detecting the minor update independently of the base package. So yeah. in V3, it detects the minor update as already present because of just how the detection logic worked. And yep. that messed up some rollback stuff and so yep. just generally not a good idea. Yep. So this is knock on from that, which this makes sense given we want to keep that other one that we would probably want this to be the way to go here. But you and Bob are have been deeper in that my my space has not been in here so i'm trusting you guys on this one so do we want this in rc2 do i pull request ready to go just put it in and if we're going to take it we should take it in rc2 oh that's a good point <laughs> that, that's <laughs> that's a very good point so yeah yeah all right uh cool um i guess give it to sean all that kind of good stuff and we will move on and Sean will go push the button. Possibly that will disappear before the end of triage or not. But definitely before the end of the day, uh, we'll say that. All right, uh, Wix cannot work with debug type embedded. Um, so this is the fact that Wix 4 is using the debug type property to set the type of the PDB that's get built in the same way that C Sharp does. And C Sharp supports the concept of embedded PDBs now, modern C Sharp uh, compiler does. And if you set the debug type like global for all of your builds across the whole space, when Wix gets it, Wix is like uh, embedded is not a, not a type that I understand for PDB. And so it then fails to build. And the question is, uh, should we do better? or should you have to override in your Wix project the debug type when you set a global embedded? Well, you don't even have to, you don't have to override it you know, per Wix proj. I mean, you can still use 
the you know directory dot props support to set it appropriately across hey. all of your Wix projects. Uh, yeah, you could do like extension of the project and all right. those kinds right. of things. Exactly. Yeah. So th there are ways around this. Um, uh, we're on time of conversation. I don't know if it's about this one or not. Uh, it's something else, I think. Uh, so, so that's definitely one way around it. I went and looked at VCX projects, and they don't look like they use debug type, which I guess isn't surprising given that they're ancient and have never been updated. Um, I think you set the PDB type through, like, you have to set it on the metadata of the link I item underneath the... Yeah. I, think, I, I never can remember. I always have to go look and remember where that piece is. It's deeply nested inside. There, there's no global? There's no global property? I don't think there's a... No, I think it's uh -huh. a global property. It's a thing. We tend to, in Wix, make it a global property. And right, we, not right. this one, but we do make global properties that then be set deep in the metadata of the VCX project right, right. type stuff. Well, that's um, where it's needed, but generally there's, yeah, there's the, you know, convenience property um, that gets yeah. passed down into the metadata. I, I don't think they do, and it's not debug type. Mm -hmm. So one yeah. option is for us to change the uh, name in Wix and not reuse debug type. Um, and instead use something else like Wix PDB type. I don't name to be decided uh, because our PDB is not a debug type. That would, I mean, the reason that came to my mind in the end after trying to get this guy to participate and actually think about the problem and work through it, I was really trying to get him to engage, but <sighs> it was, it was a loss because I was in a weird mood when I was trying to get that to happen anyway. Um, so, uh, if we're not compatible with C-sharp debug type, then maybe we shouldn't use debug type. Well, I mean, one option is, in fact, to support embedded Wix PDBs. Oh, yes, yeah, that's another option. You're right. We could, we could just throw it in as a, as a stream in the MSI. Yes, we could. <laughs> I thought about that, but then I was like, really? <laughs> like, Really? You thought about that? I, I did. I, I considered just, it. <laughs> I considered it way too wacky, but funny to mention. But no, okay, you went, you went there. Well, I went far enough to go, well, yeah, we could embed it as a binary. <laughs> And then as in a bundle, we could embed it somewhere inside the bundle. Yeah, and we have the yeah whole, absolutely. We have the whole UX container that we could That's put right. in. That's um, right. I, I, <laughs> I, but it, I did very similar. I was like, yeah, but is that really useful? Um, I guess it could be useful for patching, so you don't have to worry about losing your PDB. But That's true. That's but that's true. not enough of a scenario that I think it's worth it. And I don't know how big our PDBs are right now. I know they're smaller well, that, than four they, or three. They're much, they're much smaller than three, which is actually why... It's not completely, it's not a completely insane idea. Mostly insane, but not completely insane. Um, because it's, it's about as sane as doing, you know, embedded PDBs in your C-sharp. Granted, C-sharp has more use cases for that, you know, embedded PDB, but, um, well, so the reason I, I went this route is that, you know, it, We've already overrode the, or overloaded rather, the, the meaning of debug type, right? At, at one point in Wix 4, we actually had three types of PDBs. Um, now we're down to, you know, it's basically yes or no. Um, so I'm unsure that we want to, you know, overload. Yeah, even if we were just doing so to keep open the perhaps wacky idea of an embedded Wix PDB. Um, so are you suggesting that we should rename ours to something not PDB, not debug type? Well, I'm suggesting that we should probably support debug type. I'm, I'm wary of making, of, of renaming properties at this point. Nah. So I think we, uh, I'm wary of renaming properties at this point for its impact on customers and users. Um, the, the idea that, you know, embedded, uh, I don't, I don't think this is a serious problem. I would actually be fine if we kept debug type and, and imply and let embedded imply normal. So have embedded mean full? Yes. Another option is to warn on embedded. Sure. 
Oh, we yeah, could, yeah. Absolutely. We could default and warn or a full. Yeah. Embedded is not supported by Wix falling back to full. And if you want to get rid of the warning, then you yeah. can do extra work. Minimal extra work, to yeah, be clear. Right. Minimal extra work. That's, yeah, I'm not, I'd, be, I'd be fine with that. Uh, it's, you know, uh, I'd be fine with that. Uh, mostly at this point, I, I don't want to mess with the current behavior. And given that there's an easy workaround, then, you know, I'm fine with you know, massaging the, the value where embedded means full. Yes. Okay. I, I'm, that's fine too. All right. Go ahead and give it to me. I will go do that where embedded falls back to full with a warning saying, hey, we don't actually support embedded, so we're going to full. Because we think full is more likely what you meant than none when you said embedded. That will be straightforward. All right. A harvest directory generated WXS does not produce BA factory equals yes attribute on the BA's major payload. Produce XE fails to start BA 7165. I really should start with the number. Christopher Painter, I don't know that I've ever used Wix PDBs. Do you use validation? If you use validation and have ever had an error, you use the Wix PDB. Because um, it tells you the line numbers from validation. That's the biggest use for PDBs and day-to-day, -day, everything else. Uh, harvesting of payloads and stuff like that. Um, Sean, you took a look at a couple of the other ones, or you actually fixed them, I think, pretty rapidly. Oh, you already commented in here. Um, I mean, this is just a really simple XSLT thing. So, I mean, I guess you could add a command line argument to tell it which DLL to mark with that attribute, but I wasn't really interested in doing it. Perfect. I don't understand the, the, sorry, I, I've never understood the, the harvesting for, for payloads. Um, is this, I mean, do people need like, to do this for their BAs? For a self-contained BA, you have no idea what the runtime's going to, it's going to put a ton of files in the output directory and you need all of them. Sure. But sorry, I guess this is, I, I wouldn't consider this to be something that you would need to do at build time every time. This, <laughs> okay, I admit this is my, you know, attitude toward heat for the past 15 years or so, which is, yeah, it's something you run um, and fix up by hand, which is your perfect opportunity to add an attribute like this. Like just, the self-contained BA is the use case where the yeah, .NET runtime will put a whole bunch of files in the output directory that you have no control over, and that might change as you like upgrade a package or something. Uh, yeah, I suppose. All right, but it's like, yeah, fine. We'll mark it up for grabs and someone wants to fix it. That's great. It's like the definition of up for grabs. Cool. Great. Awesome. I knew we were going to have one of them up here that was up for grabs. We've had two, one or two. Yep. Two. Yeah, we, we brought one back from the dead and put it up for grabs. That's what we did. All right. Now for my favorite issue of the day, the one where the person ignores everything. Oh, they didn't ignore everything. Now, did they reformat? The, or whatever. Uh, they gave us an image of an error that is very interesting to me to fix, but they didn't provide us enough information to know how to get there. So we need more information on this because something in their WXS file is blowing up. So yeah, that we need. Um, Are they going to get anything out of a, no, nothing's going to be useful from that. No, just build this from MS build and the log file will have more information than this. And I thought our our exception messages were including the stack trace with them now. Yeah, but I don't. I thought they did it all on one line. Off. Oh, is it cut it off anyway? Yeah, fine. Well, so, I don't. I don't know if it cuts. I know it cuts it off right. after a, so a new line. We need more information. They need to run MS Build on their solution or whatever, and give us the full error message that gets sped out that is more than one line long. Or send us their WXS files that reproduce it, and that right. work. Open a repo, put the WSS files there. That's the easiest thing 
for all of you out there, if you really want to make it easy, which is the best way to get your bug definitely on the list, is to open a repo that has everything we need in it so we can just run it and be like, oh, yeah, that crashed. Yeah. We'll fix it Dude, next. This is a perfect, perfect example of, of opening a good bug. This bug was opened an hour ago. Yeah. Um, if we get very quick feedback, maybe we can still look at it today. But if we had all the data from yes. when the bug was opened, we could definitely yeah, we could have fixed this today. Now, I'm In hoping this is actually a dupe of the other one that looked a lot like this. Uh, Chris, yes, the issue template is going to be changing radically now with the upper grabs. So that is on my list of exactly after RC2. I have a whole slew of things to just clean up this stuff. And yes, it will be part of the issue template now that issue templates are nice and powerful. So um, people still won't do it because nobody wants to create another repro for any of this stuff. At least that's what I've found. But maybe they'll attach the files, which is second best. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping this is actually the same argument out of range exception that got fixed earlier this week. Which also would be useful to, to know from precise version numbers rather than Visual Studio 2022. Rather oh, and than Wix 4 Preview. Yeah. Preview All one. kinds of not useful All information in this preview. person. Yeah. 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 So trying to get the issue template to narrow this down is going to be a challenge. All right. Cool. So that will stay triaged with more information and that will get, I don't know why that's not gone already, but that's fine. Uh, these two, so we will have one issue left for us for triage in RC3. I'm sure more will, more will pop up. All right. Issues for Wix, existing Wix 4 that we've already taken. Let's refresh this since I know one has come in. Uh, I have created the RC3 project, which is not the way we're gonna be doing things in the future, but that's kind of how we're tagging things right now. Um, these are both in the RC3 project to update our build process, to go grab the latest cubes, and to validate that this thing that we're doing when generating BAs is correct. I'm gonna say we should probably do these in RC3 and yeah. be done. Yeah. All right. I mean, who knows, RC3 might be the last one. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna try to fix this today. So that will be gone today. Um, the error message when creating cabinets greater than two gigabytes has is not as good as it used to be in three. So I wanna go figure out why it's not as good as three. There's a lot of changes in the way cabs get built. Um, so somewhere that just that error messaging got lost. And I wanna go put that in. I am not gonna get that in RC2. It's gonna take more time. Um, that'll be in RC3, but it's, it's just a, get a repro of this, get it, the error message to be good and then go for it. The user was very good and confirmed that the issue is when the cabs are too big, it hits this. So that that's good. We do have checks around other places to prevent this, but it's still possible for the data to be just the right size to get just over and our calculations don't catch it. So um, anyway, better error message is needed for that one and that's will be done in RC3. And then we have display internal UI is not allowed, which is a doc generation type thing that Bob said he's gonna take, which doesn't really have to be in 4.0, but it's fine for us to track it here because it's part of the big documentation changes that we've done in 4.0. Cool. That's so I'm gonna to try to get one more bug in today for RC2. The rest of these are definitely scheduled RC3. Well, this could go any time. Doc bugs could go at any time. And and maybe this argument out of range will come out and Sean is going to, or maybe he already has got this minor upgrade removes all services. So there we go with what's in the last couple of fixes in RC2 today. RC2 build comes out tomorrow. Sounds good? Yep. All right. Ship it. Ship it, yeah. Well, almost, almost. I, I wanna do something for this. Get that off my list. All right, so that brings us to uh, your turn. If you guys have any questions, comments, things that people want to talk about, questions they have, uh, we've covered lots more content than we typically do in these sessions. Usually it's all about issue triages, especially lately, but lots of other things have happened. I've seen people talking about things in chat. I think they're mostly talking to each other. Um, I've tried to address the things that I think were to me. Um, and anything else that's going on. I always have to fill space to give people time to type. Uh, it's great having all you new people here. We'd love to have you back uh, next week as or in two weeks. Actually, we have to talk about that. Uh, the next meeting, 
whenever that may be. We need to talk about that. We will. Um, so it's great to have you here. Obviously, RC2 is coming out. And uh, let's just talk about the next meeting. I think that's the ninth. If we're, no, second, sorry, second. And Sean said he was going to be out surfing the snow um, that week, yeah. correct? I mean, theoretically, we could do on the 31st on Tuesday, but yeah, right. I'm going to be out after yeah. that. Um, so given that the next uh, RC, uh, the yeah, RC3 is planned to come out the 24th, should we just skip a couple weeks and go for the 9th and the 23rd of February then? I would just be skipping one week. Sorry, bump a week. Yes, bump a week and go for a three-week delay between here and there. Um, that would be one option. I don't know that we're going to need to meet next week that fast, so I don't know that we need to do 26th, 9th, and 24th. Yeah, I, I like having this there. meeting the day before an RC. So, you know, I I, I, I like that approach. So I, I I recommend, yes, skipping the second meeting on the 9th and then meeting on the 23rd and then shipping on the 24th. Okay, so meetings next week, the 9th and 23rd. So the next meeting would be three weeks from now. Christopher yep. asks, we ever use NuGet pre-releases or only the GitHub feed? We use NuGet pre-releases now. And we use the GitHub feed for dev releases. So we use the two feeds appropriately because NuGet does not want your nightly builds on NuGet. They've been pretty clear about they're not the repository of all builds of all the world. They get kind of, I mean. Well, why, would, why would they complain about yeah, terabytes of data? Exactly. And we are not a small NuGet. <laughs> so uh, like ours is, you know, a big build system that's being carried there. So anyway, I'm just glad they do it all for free. Yeah. I mean, once we have a release one, be will we do pre? I mean, once we have a release one, will we do pre-release? Our, our, our process is going to be the same as it is right now, I think. When we're just doing devs and there's no like announcement release where we want to get more attention, we'll just do the dev builds. They'll continue to go to GitHub like they do now. You can get those builds whatever it's all good and then we'll try to get more attention about or at least to get people to kind of go hey look there's excitement around it and those will then get pushed up to nuget and sometimes they will be uh pre-releases like preview one or rc1 rc2 whatever whatever um or it'll be the rtm release where we're like hey we're done with this one we're on to the next one and then that'll be up there too looking for goodies more free. if you want more frequently you want the dev builds you can get them after every single PR is uh, submitted. You can get a release uh, from that today. So that's the way to get them is from a dev build. Um, all right. So, Sean, does that sound good? I didn't hear. I, I didn't hear you voice. Uh, if that was good, ninth and twenty third of February. Yeah, that's good. All right. Cool. So we will be back in three weeks. I'm still filling space. If anybody has other questions, we'll take them. Oh, there's always that delay between words I say and the time they hit. Going back out there. So let's see. So that says February 9th. So three weeks from now should work out just fine. We can always like, you know, scramble together a meeting if something's going crazy in RC2. But honestly, we'll discuss it um, on discussions. Oh, by the way, I <laughs> did just create a um, category in discussions called Dev, uh, Wix Dev Talk or something like that, where that will essentially be the replacement for Wix Devs. Uh, we can go there and have, and it's an open form it's not a question answer kind of thing so it could just be hey let's discuss these things and hopefully people won't be posting their questions and answers there if they do i'll just recategorize their questions and stuff like that but that will be the place so if, uh, i didn't mention that earlier i forgot to wix devs of course mailing list and will be going away uh, so we can go discuss dev things if we have to go back and forth um on them but you know if they're big things, we'll have whips and we'll do discussions of those and so on and so forth. So we'll talk more about that as we start looking at more future development and things like that. Um, so that's that. All right, cool. That's all we got. We will be back in three weeks. Normally it would be two. We will be back in three weeks. That would be February 9th, same place, same time. This 9.30 Pacific time uh, start. And we will review how things are going for RC3. And of course, we will be picking up 
uh, we will be picking up uh, bug fixes, or we will not be waiting to triage issues. We are being hyperactive, at least I'm being trying to be hyperactive. I, we've all been picking up issues as they've been coming in going, oh, we should fix that, oh, we should fix that, oh, we should fix that. So uh, things will get fixed in RS3 as they uh, pop up. We will not wait for the, the ninth to do triage, but we will check in at the ninth and say, hey, how is RC3 doing? And my hope is that we're like, eh, it's been pretty quiet. Might be too much to hope, but hey, one can dream. February 9th, we'll be back for Bob Sean. We'll see all you guys later. Bye. Bye.